Happy Monday. <laughs> Happy Monday to everyone. How is everyone? Good. Yeah, really good. Much better than, than last um, Monday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it was uh, interesting last Monday, wasn't it? Yeah. I think I just, we're all just riding the waves together. Yeah, we yeah. all. I just put the link into the chat. We haven't got anyone. Oh, now we've got someone. Someone's just jumped on to say hello. Would love for you to say hello in the chat um, and let us know that you're watching. So everyone had a good weekend? Mm, yeah. Sorry, I've just drawn our first card. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one, is it? Yeah. Let's go for strap it. Yourself, strap yourself in. Okay, <laughs> strap in. Well, we may as well jump in. We dive totally. in. We've, we've got a couple of people on. We'd love for you to say hello in the chat. Let's see if, that, if we can see that. So the card, the first card today is beautifully separately together. The gaps we feel with our significant other create expectations for them to discover the way, paved by us, designed by us, walked by us, for us. So why do we expect they know the way or want to know or need to know? So love them on their path whilst walking yours with a smile on your face. Decide on that place to meet and connect and reflect on how far you've come beautifully separately together. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. And and so, like, <laughs> I've, just had my, I've just had my kids over for the weekend, right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys start it, and then <laughs> and then you're gonna jump in. I'll I'll jump in and say what uh, what comes up for me because of course it's not about my partner, but you yeah, know, allowing allowing um not allowing but um be recognizing how far I've come and um. And where my children, like, you know, if we, I may as well start now. If we are, um, you know, programmed and conditioned for the first, you know, five, six years of our lives, we're sponges and we're like, um, you know, in a hypnotic state and we're just absorbing everything. I think about what I was doing in that part of my children's lives and I was separating from their father and I was, um in a really bad place and I was too scared to speak up and it was really brave of me to move when like to, to leave him when um, I didn't um, I couldn't you know like I was scared and I, I didn't believe in myself and um, and so I'm sure that all of that has you know and then we were moving a lot and we moved up um, we moved to the country in New South Wales and then we moved up to Cairns and we slept on a quilt on the floor and blah, 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 blah. All the stuff that really, you know, was a bit full on. Um, and so if that's now, you know, where they're at now, like the, in this conditioned response without even recognising it, because we haven't spoken that much, you know, like they, they've definitely moved into a place that's their own choice. Mm. And, you know, I honor and respect that. And um, and so it's just watching, you know, the dynamics of every so often wanting to say something and, you know, this weekend because they came over for the weekend and, and wanting to say something and then mm, am I, you know, this is my meaning, this is my perception, this is my definition and that's their life and, you know, who, who am I to, you know, um, they're 27 and nearly 26, you know, like mm. why to make a statement of what they should be or shouldn't be doing at that age, you know, like. Mm. So allowing them to walk the path mm. um, without you without you trying to direct or, um, and I don't think this card is, is just about um, relationships. Um partners it's about mm -hmm. all relationships you know that mm -hmm. the we try to maintain control over as humans yes we try to maintain control over children over partners over so that we our life. <laughs> our, our, yeah so that we ourselves feel safe and secure and um and in that process we stifle growth and create expectations and judgments and disappointment and all of this icky stuff 
So, yeah, I'm really glad that you brought up your children. And it's interesting because I've been going back over a lot of old photos and videos and um, just this morning with Millie I was watching videos of when I was heavily pregnant with her and Mum's like, <laughs> no, Millie's like, Mum, you look 58. <laughs> no, you that looks like your 58-year-old sister who died of lung cancer. <laughs> oh, thanks, Millie. <laughs> I was 20. I was pounds of babes, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so it's pretty interesting. But um, seeing seeing Tom as a two-year-old playing in the water and uh, hearing him talk and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and him just being here on the weekend. And one of the my highlights of the weekend was him. Not that when he, not that he that he was leaving, but when he was leaving, I took Pepper for a walk and he drove off and he turned around the corner at the end of Corey Street with his sunglasses on and his little his little Corolla and I'm like, oh, there goes my boy, like <laughs> beautifully separately together, right? So he's he's not living with me anymore and he hasn't for quite a long time, but letting him. Um, come back and have the conversations and, and connect with me when he uh, when he needs to and him knowing that that landing pad is always there for him, for us to reconnect mm. and he goes off again. Yeah. Mm. All sunny's on. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good, isn't it, hey, because mm. my kids are here for the weekend. They're actually still here. So my son's doing work from home, like at the office. He's in a meeting in the other room. And, um, yeah, it's it's really um, – we had the whole weekend. We, we went and bought some board games, cracked up. Like, it was it was really good. And, and to, that beautifully separately together um, because one of the things that um, we've been doing in my Conscious Creator Mastermind, as you would know, um, Nicolette, um, we're doing like a 60-day challenge of ch um, making your choices in the morning. What do you choose? You know, who are you choosing to be? And um, there's a bit more to it. But um, so I've been doing my choices, right, every morning and just watching the dynamics. There was one or two times that I went into my identity and didn't say anything. I just felt, you know, and I was quick, I was just reflecting on, you know, their identity and what they're like now, you know. Um, but I, you know, it was that separately together, you know, process and, and the respect of this is who they are and this is who they came down to be and all of those things. But um, the difference in the dynamics because I chose, you know, to live the life I love and, and whatever it was that my statements were for the morning, um, all the way through the weekend and, like, we just had crack up, you know. Like there was moments that may have been challenges before that weren't because I made cho a different choice. Mm. So it was really mm. interesting to, to watch that dynamic. Mm. Mm. That's really beautiful. I've just um, been absorbing it all. Um, for me, yeah, and I've actually been feeling really overwhelmed with... Um, some really big emotion from, from this morning's topic because it's such a big one. And I don't think any of us move through our soul's journey without coming to this exact point of sometimes feeling that sense of desperateness for the ones that are closest to us, that we love the most, to be on their journey as well. And if we feel that the, that gap is getting bigger or, or um, those energetic cords are, are stretched to their capacity now because we're essentially operating in different um, mm, vibrations, philosophy, modes of being, all those things, and that's been maxed out, I know I've certainly felt times where, you know, I've been impatient for the ones that I love to kind of be like, guys, it's, it's actually really beautiful on this side. You know, it's like, I know it's kind of scary to let everything go and, and drop, you know, the conditioning and, you know, those stories that we tell ourselves to keep ourselves safe. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest learning points that I had was 
with someone really close to me that I that I love a lot and who is um, so very powerful and yet chooses not to play <laughs> and um, and um, you know and it's just it's like what are you waiting for yeah. um, and and it's funny <laughs> like yeah come on <laughs> and it's just like while ever I was holding that cord being like mm. it's really great on this side um yeah there was just so much resistance and so what I actually learned to do and and I'm sure you ladies have done the same um but it's just drop the cord and yeah. and and not not in a um in a judgmental way not in a defeated way but from a place of pure acceptance that either way, whether you choose to play or not play, that is absolutely your choice. You are okay either way. I am okay either way. I love you irrespective of that. And now we can just actually be together and enjoy one another. Mm. And paradoxically, what tends to happen is as soon as we drop that, because there's no longer the resistance, they actually go, oh, maybe I will take a step towards, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. not that you do it with that intention because it, it has to come from that place of I purely accept and love either way. It, it doesn't matter. It's only with that level of freedom that they're then able to have it from their own choice of freedom as to what they want to do. Yeah. And, so. and I love your whole um, acceptance because um, I often say that as you know, myself is out of respect for, mm. you know, it, everyone's choices, right? And even the choice to not to choose or to um, not be aware of the choices is still a choice. Like, you know. Yeah, the I'm, choice to not make a choice. Yeah, the choice to not make a choice or the choice to I don't want to hear the choices. Mm. Like I don't mm. want to hear the choices. <laughs> I, I'm happy in my safe bubble and that's okay. And so, you know, who I, you know, who are we to, mm. to play God or devil's mm. advocate or whatever it is in mm. any dynamic when it's, you know, everyone's got choices and they came down or, you know, we're here for a reason yeah. here to experience. And um, talking about cards, I've got a beautiful deck that are downstairs that um, um, I often pick. And, like, you know, there's a card deck about this big and I continuously, continuously get this one called Family of Light. Mm -hmm. and, and it's always, like, it's so pertinent because it's about um, that we're, you know, most people are here to love their family and friends but that you're here to, you know, to love the, you know, the wider community of, of the world and, you know, like step up and, and, you know, love unconditionally and stop feeling like you've got to take these guys with you sort of thing, basically. And it came up on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just went, ah, you know, every time it comes up, there's a new preface to it, a new meaning to it, you know, like there's a new definition to it and I'm like, oh, wow, you know, like letting go of even my children's expectations of what I'm supposed to be as a mother and, you know, like I'm here to step up. I'm here to, you know, as we all are. So I'm pretty sure there'd be people on here. Um, Vicky's just saying good morning. We've got Helen on here as well and someone else, I'm assuming maybe Irene. Um, has anyone um, had this experience with... Um, you know, wanting to support their friends or their family to um, when you think you've got a better way. <laughs> I know, I know. Just a, really great, a really great example is um, a little while ago, Millie said to me, oh, mum, I've been meditating for ages. I just didn't want to tell you because it would please you too much. Because <laughs> I, I, I did exactly like I really think that you would benefit from you know how about how about you just look at this YouTube video or or how about you um, take some time to be in stillness and and then I just gave up because she wasn't wasn't responding <laughs> she was doing it anyway yeah 
because it would please you isn't it interesting age groups because <laughs> i was thinking yeah. of my kids at like the age of their 20s yeah you know and i was thinking what i was doing in my 20s and i'm thinking yeah at least they want to come and visit me they want to hang out want to want to um cheat at board games <laughs> <laughs> the next card is love lead with love in every moment when you lead with love there is no room for resentment discord jealousy or judgment love people where they are in their journey not where you wish them to be when you're when appreciation replaces expectation your heart radiates energy to support your dreams lead with love well, is there anything more to say? Like, <laughs> there's just a summary of everything that we've just been speaking about, right? Yeah. So I and think we need a third card because that was just the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but what I wanted to um, talk about too is not it's not only our expectations of other people, it's also when we when we are with family or we are with the people that we love and we drop into a role that we feel they expect of us so we're quashing our own um our own dreams and our own what our own creating um of our life because we're oh okay this is the box that I fit in when I'm with this person I'm going to behave like that because that's how I know how to connect with them where they're at and I don't know about you guys but when I when that happens for me I get lost in the box for a while and I um, I go, oh, who, who am I again? Like who am I outside of that role with that person? Um, and it takes me a bit to um, flow in and out with my different relationships. I, um, I can't remember where I heard it from. Um, it may have been Jeanette Mundy who's an ontological coach. It may have been from her. But it's, it's actually called something coupling. And it's Oh yeah, you were talking about that the other day. Yeah. And it's it's actually got to do with um like the patterns, our neural pathways and stuff. Like just, you know, like they they fire together in those particular relationships and so they cement in and and you respond to their reactions and vice versa. And it yeah, it's called coupling, something coupling. I can't remember what the, the first one was. Okay, that card. Are you ready? Yeah, go for it. Freedom inside. I feel a freedom inside myself that wasn't there before. The unease and shame I had has released, washed up to the shore. The rhythm of the waves, the rhythm of the waves, I miss them. Over and over they broke me, but now I seem to have within me a new sandbar filled with shells and sparkles and smells designing my future without the desire for comfort, commitment or adoring gazes. They were shallow, slippery, well meant, but I missed their intent. I was too busy claiming my future in their eyes, not my own. What are my desires and my rewires? So I'm just going to read that bit again. I was too busy claiming my future in their eyes, not my own. Mm. Mm. I find with um, that expectation and, and roles, what I find plays out in really subtle ways is it's not necessarily what we do with others, but it's what we don't do. Because when, when you're at that point of um, emergence or soul expansion or um, really living with intention and and kind of serving those higher missions you're also aware that the choices you make does have a ripple effect to mm -hmm. everyone and if others um aren't quite at that point of change because you know we don't ne we're not necessarily in well we're not in control of the ripples you know that's kind of the point um but in knowing that what we do has impact and impact on others and impact on the ones that we love I find that often it can be what isn't done when we're in a dynamic so rather than being the full expression of ourselves, um 
you know, it's 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 the it's the holding back in knowing mm-hmm. that a change for me, yeah. yeah, also means a change for others, and um, it becomes that kind of well, where's the the sweet spot of honoring what has been previously built um, and honoring what's next. And also embracing that sometimes that means a tower moment where everything that was actually crumbles and falls away to allow um, for the new. And that takes a tremendous level of bravery to step into in going everything that we have previously held as sacred, now we don't know because you put, um, you know, you roll a pebble down a hill, you don't know where it's going to land. And it's part of the journey to have faith that where it does is um, is divinely intended and that we will cope no matter where that lands. So in terms of expectations and roles, I, yeah, it, I don't, um, it's not necessarily what we find ourselves doing in that, but what are we not doing in that for fear of disrupting the status quo? I, I could just keep getting, we don't want to rock the boat. Mm. Mm. But, mm. but and that fear of of rocking the boat it keeps us like it it is actually paralyzing and then when what when what is actually needed is that like you said the tower moment or the boat capsizing washing up to the shore and we build a new bloody yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well the other part of that you know is once you when you really step into understanding that you're constantly growing and and accepting yourself and loving yourself right in those moments like I I think about my family who have absolutely no idea what I do like my my mum is constantly you know uh you know like she's she's just in a different space and my two brothers don't even ask um they one of them you know oh she's you know doing hippie stuff or whatever (laughs) and so (laughs) um it's really interesting when you can really own yourself and and be okay with who you are in those moments of being able to like there's a difference between where I'm going with this is there's a difference between um not doing something in a relationship you know you guys come together you know and you you hold back parts of yourself out of fear of rocking the boat or being judged or being perceived as different or you know somehow you know disrupting the status quo there's a difference between that and actually holding parts of yourself um at peace because you know that they won't understand it and it, and you're just flowing with the energy of the conversation or the relationship and and um, out of respect for the dynamics, you're not going to share that part because they wouldn't understand it and then or they're going to, you know, um, feel uncomfortable themselves. It takes them out of their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. So when you can really just sit in that place of really this is who I am and I'm okay, okay not to share that part just because I want to have a beautiful relationship with you, Mm. And, and so there's sometimes there's not sharing just because you want to you want to keep that beautiful love relationship. Well, it's it's that same uh, beautifully separately together, right? Yeah. yeah, that's the part of you that is going on a bit of a different journey that you don't necessarily have to involve that that person. Yeah, in. yeah. Um, but see, there's a difference, you know. Like the, you yeah, can, you don't share because there's fear or. But then there's a not sharing because it's just not appropriate. Like, you know, it's it's trying to justify yourself and look at me and, you know, like somehow get, you know, that, that um, confirmation. Because of, it's driven by approval. Yes, yeah. Instead of driv- being driven by sharing of sharing of yourself to connect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think what you said about that inner peace um, and I think, you know, we also just want to be really gentle with ourselves whilst we're arriving at that point because, you know, when we look at things from the most global or zoomed out perspective, I think it can be 
really easy to kind of go, yeah, that makes sense and that's where everything fits and, and so I'm okay with that. And then I think when things are inherently tied and, and of the heart nature, um, yeah, I also just feel kind of called to, to speak about self-compassion as well mm. because, you know, like sometimes when we talk about these really big concepts as they're absolutely fundamentally true and the journey to arrive at that point can also be really harrowing. So oh, we just, you know, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, just absolutely. holding space for both, you know. Yeah. And, and and if you're you know, if you're finding it tricky or you feel that pull, that's completely okay and mm -hmm. normal and part mm -hmm. of the journey. And so how we hold ourselves while we're arriving at that place of self of, of peace and self-acceptance and self-love and being okay within our center, whether we share or not, whether we're received in the way that we intend or would like or not, you know, that, that, that's a soul journey to arrive at that place of, of neutrality and peace and, and centeredness. Take, yeah. And can take many, many, many years depending on mm -hmm. the relationship. I, I think yeah. about my brother in particular, um, and how much I so wanted him to understand me, you know, because mm -hmm. in my eyes, we're actually, we, I believe that we were on the same page. We were mm -hmm. because he was very scientific and I was learning about my spirituality. But to me, it was on the science level, you know, from a different perspective than the woo woo, you know, and, um, and we would just clash every time I'd come to, to um together with him to you know oh look i've got this to share with you now <laughs> you know look look can't you see what i can see and he would just slam me because because i didn't understand myself enough at that stage and i was trying to get approval and and um a connection and you know and he would slam me big time you know mm. and um and it wasn't you know, and it was, yeah, it was a soul journey. It was a process to discovering more of myself, more acceptance, more compassion of my own. Then I didn't need that from him, you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. Then, you have, then you have the relationship that's based on respect for each other rather than this push-pull of, of um, approval and disapproval or however that yeah. And Absolutely. the way... I learned to view it um, because I can really relate, you know, being in the kind of earlier stages of such big paradigm shifts. And, and at that time, it's, it's all shades of beautiful and overwhelming. You know? um, and, and so there's a part of us that looks for it to be a shared experience because, and, you know, we're wanting some kind of safety and security to say, am I still loved? Am I still accepted? Am I still okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And often in that, um, that, that early phase, there's a lot that we're experiencing that we haven't actually consciously gone after. You know, we're, we're finding that we're, we're, getting downloads and receiving a lot, trying to make sense of it. And so, of course, we're going to turn to the ones that are closest to us or that we've got that, that backing with. And then if they mirror back to us that we're somehow crazy or not okay, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's going to be incredible. And the whole world's <laughs> doing that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And so for me, um, I think that importance of, one, finding your soul tribe of being like, no, this is a shared language and I'm not crazy and there's people that get it and that I don't have to struggle with to get it. Um, I think that's a really important part of the journey. And then the, the other part that's coming through for me is the ones that we tend to, to struggle with the most or, or um, clash with the most and particularly the ones that are, the, that are closest to us I learned to, well, they are our closest soulmates and I learned to view those experiences of them clashing or having a very uh, a different perspective as a gift because mm. if I could experience that different perspective reflected to me, that that perspective exists out in the world and, and far more prevalent, but the fact that they're actually gifting that to us 
in really a sacred and safe space in that they are our nearest and dearest. And so, of course, there's going to be, um, you know, in, in some cases, blood is thicker than water or, or whatever it is, but there's going to be a, um, a part of the relationship that's maintained because these are your closest people. Mm. So so in, in viewing it as that's one of my nearest and dearest soulmates offering me the gift of experiencing a different perspective and now how do I stay true to um, myself, my authentic self, where I stand and um, what I'm about and potentially integrate that in the next time I present this information, that is such a powerful oh, gift. So powerful. That's so powerful. And, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know yeah. with me, and, me and my brother actually, yeah. Mm. I um, had a conversation with Millie this morning before I took her to school and we were talking about my dad, her grandfather, and they have always clashed, like massively clashed. We lived together for six months in mum and dad's unit and they just fought. I mean, dad and I were fighting anyway, but but little Millie, who was like six, and granddad, you know, going at it all the time. And she she handles him so well now. And, and I said to her, what changed for you, Mooch? Because she, she would get so angry with, his point of view on things and try to try to force him to see and he would try to force her to see his point of view, you know. And she said, oh, well, mum, I've just decided to try to think when I'm when I'm talking with people, I try to think how they think and understand how they, why they are the way they are, why they think the way they, and it wasn't just about dad, but all of her relationships. And she's so peaceful in her interactions with people now compared to the little like firecracker she was she still has that behind it but there's so much more power in allowing people to come and flow and interact yeah. with you yeah. in that in in a, a way that feels comfortable for them rather yes. than yeah so how we, cool that yeah. on the how same old is she as well 14 yeah Mm. How awesome, hey! Mm. Some wise, wise little, um, wise head on her shoulders. <laughs> so we have gone over a little bit. Um, what has anyone got anything exciting happening this week? I am so excited because the first of my prints have arrived. Um, so I've got a company that's printing my artworks for me. And I ordered one of each style that's available on my website and they've arrived and the quality is amazing and they look they look like a painting. They look like oh, awesome. an original painting, but they're a print. And I'm so stoked. Um, yeah, I'm so stoked with that. So I'm sort of riding the wave of that and, and getting my head around um, marketing for my website and all of the all of the structural things that I hate. But um, <laughs> but I'm embracing done, it. Right? It had to be done. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm speaking at Zonta International here in the Toowoomba Group um, tomorrow night. So that will be really nice. Um, talking about, yeah, Light Tower and the Diamond Mind and kind of the impact of corona on, on mental well-being and um, what we can do moving ahead to help ride the waves so so that will be really lovely and um i've also got a, a graphic that has been plaguing me it's quite um a layered concept uh around the process of manifestation um that that is finally <laughs> coming together as to what it needs to be so so that's really exciting to to finally have a visual representation of that um so that that's yeah, a, a big thing ticked off for me. And then, um, yeah, just business as usual as well. So clients and workshops and, and that kind of thing. Beautiful. That's awesome. Um, I have no idea what I've got on this week. <laughs> Irene, where are you? Hey? I said, Irene, where are you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have to look in my, uh, you know, a weekend with the kids and, you um, Yep, clients, clients, and more clients. There is um, 
nothing major happening this week. So yes, it's just clients. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's a journey every day, isn't it? <laughs> what was that? Sorry, that's a journey every day. Yeah, yeah. Well, today I've um, Mondays I have off, so I haven't got any clients today. Um, and as I said, I've got my two kids here, so um, some more board games. Sort of, sort of work. They're working, so I'm I'm going to be sort of pottering and I'll make some nice lunch for everyone and all that sort of stuff. So cool. looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, take care, ladies. Have a beautiful week. Thank you. Yes. You too. Yes. Big, beautiful week to everyone watching. Thank you for watching. And um, we will catch you next week. Bye. See ya.